Some breaking royal news this morning. It has just been revealed that Harry and Meghan will be returning to the UK next month. Royal editor Russell Myers is here. Russell, what's this all about? Well, it's very interesting because, you know, we were just talking just a few weeks ago after the celebrations with the Platinum Jubilee, uh, Harry and Meghan taking a back seat, yeah. unusually for them, I must say, that uh, we didn't see too much of them. And, uh, and then they left before the celebrations were over. When were we going to see them again? Because, you know, there's obviously still these feuds, ruckus with the family. And it seems that though they are planning to come back over to the UK, Europe indeed. They've got a few dates that they've announced today. They are going to be travelling to some of big charities that they've supported in the past. So just a bit of a rundown in September, they will be travelling to Manchester for the One Young World Summit, a charity that they've both uh, supported in the past. And the next day on uh, the 6th of September, flying over to Germany for the one year to go big celebration for the Invictus Games, which will be held in Dusseldorf the year after. And then an another huge charity, very dear to Prince Harry's heart, the Well Child Awards, mm. which is on the 8th of September. Now, we haven't got any dates in the diary to pop over and see the family. Well, that's what I was just saying. Well, it's very charity-based. It's indeed, not just to catch yeah. up with. Well, would this, all, would this be classed as sort of private visits? Obviously, mm. the Queen will still be in, uh, in uh, Balmoral um, having a summer holiday. So, listen, we will wait and see. I'm sure we will hear about it through the grapevine um, if they do pop in on, their, on his brother oh, or I'm sure we will. other members of the family. Well, lots of discussions at the minute about Harry's memoir, of mm. course. And I'm guessing by the time they arrive, in September, we'll know even more. Yes. Um, it's very interesting times, isn't it? Because I'm guessing there's a lot of worry within the royal family. Well, there is, this. definitely. I mean, this memoir is going to be absolutely explosive. Whatever he says, people around the world would be pouring over the detail. And it's emerged over the last few days that Harry's team, this team of ghostwriters that he's working with, have actually been in touch with the judicial um, investigators in Paris that uh, looked into Princess Diana's fateful car crash 25 years ago. Of course, this year is the 25th anniversary, mm -hmm. coinciding with Harry's book. No doubt he will be speaking a lot about the trauma, the grief that he went yeah. through, how that shaped him as a person. I think he, spoke, he said that, that he's talking about not only the man he's become, but sort of the, the, uh, the family that he was born into. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this will no doubt be explosive about his, his sort of grief and his angst through those years, but also, you know, how it's led to him departing the royal family. Now, he has said he won't be criticising the Queen. Mm -hmm. I think that is, a, that is quite clear that he doesn't want to upset his grandmother. However, certainly the, the, the wounds are still very, very raw within the family. And by default, if he's upsetting other members of the family, <laughs> of undoubtedly course, the Queen yeah. is upset. Yes, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, it, as you say, explosive is clearly the only word yes, for it. Yes, I think the only word for now. it. Yeah. Um, Diana's former bodyguard has has spoken out and and has sort of explained how he feels he could have changed history, in fact, yeah, if he had been working that night. Yeah, I mean, again, I think yeah, the 25th anniversary, just in a couple of weeks, there will be an awful lot of people coming out and giving their version of events. It's something that uh, I think the, the whole country will reflect on, no doubt the family will uh, will as well. And Lee Sampson, who is uh, part of uh, her sort of entourage at the time, he wasn't with her on that fateful night. However, he was part of the team that guarded her all around the world, worked with the, the fireheads as well. And he said, you know, when he discovered that they weren't wearing seatbelts, he had this sort of day of reckoning, really, that uh, it would have been one of his first things he would have thought about, about wearing seatbelts in the car. I mean, this is potentially very controversial, mm. potentially not very helpful for the family, revisiting this uh, this awful, awful event. But uh, I think it tells you a lot about sort of his relationship with her because some parts in his book, he's got a new book co co coming out called Protecting Diana, A Bodyguard's Story. And I like some of the issues that he talks about, about how um, the parallels between her and Harry, I think we can, we can look mm. at, that she wanted to potentially move to America. She was worried about the media intrusion in her life. She was worried about sort of how her end would be, I suppose, after the death of her dear friend Jenny Versace. So plenty to pour over mm. as well with this book. It's very it? difficult for a family to listen oh, to very the, difficult, the you know. what ifs. It, it, that's yeah, that's yeah. quite tough, isn't it? I think especially for the you know for William and Harry, there that has been a constant source of angst in their life, really, about what would ever have happened if um, if their mother hadn't passed away so yeah. tragically. Very, very difficult. Um, now explain this then, Russell. Prince Prince Andrew, who has, has stepped away from public mm. life, shall yes. we say, temporarily, yes. we've yeah. been told, but um, how does it work in terms of his protection? We know Harry and Meghan have had a bit of an argument mm. over this. Mm. How does it work for him? Are the taxpayers still funding 
his well, again, sort of bubble. Well, again, another huge, huge issue here because a lot has been made about Prince Harry's uh, royal protection. He's actually had that stripped away from him. He's taking the British government to court, which is still ongoing. He's got two major court cases lodged at the High Court because he believes, you know, as uh, the family he was born into, his role within the royal family, even though he's chosen to step away from that, he's still a target. And I would, you know, mm. I tend to agree with him because uh, there is still a target on his head. He's a yeah. former uh, British soldier as well. However, Prince Andrew, who has left the royal family in disgrace, is still getting his royal protection. Now, this is just a, a recent decision by the executive committee who made that same decision to take away Prince Harry's. Now, one may argue, what, what is the sense in doing that? It's costing the British taxpayer between half a million and three million pounds a year to protect this man, <gasps> who has had to, had to step away in disgrace. And uh, you may ask what on earth he is doing for that money, because he's not doing any public engagements. He still thinks there is a way back to public life. I imagine he's probably the only person in the world who thinks that is possible. Mm -hmm. And yet this decision has been made. So I think Prince Harry will be mentioning this at uh, his next High Court event, or certainly his lawyers I'm will guessing. take some interest. But that's a huge amount of money, isn't well, it? Well, it's a staggering for, amount of money. For I mean, someone who's not doing... Well, he's not doing anything. Very much I mean, or going we, anywhere. We, but... we see him riding the Queen's horses every now and then, yeah. but he's certainly not doing any public events. So uh, I think that, you know, the, the public's opinion weighs heavily in this case and maybe we'll see a revisiting of this. Well, there's a few pennies being saved because the Cambridges are downsizing. Yes, well, they're downsizing <laughs> to their third house, but, uh, you know, they are moving away. I think this is quite an important period in their lives because they wanted... Yeah, you know, I, I think whenever you do um, sort of engagements, we travel with them, they're very much uh, creating a home life for their children. They like to pick them up from school and take them to school, be, be back in time after, after tours to make sure they have that family time um, because their children will be involved in royal life. However, so they're moving away from Kensington's Palace, they're moving to Adelaide Cottage on the Windsor Estate, but it is a smaller cottage. I mean, it's still very grand. It's, uh, it's very, very beautiful indeed. But there'll be no uh, space for sort of living housekeepers, living chefs, no space for Maria Borello, who is their nanny, who's been with them for many, many years. And I think this, uh, this gives you an indication of what the Cambridges are moving forward. They know that there is going to be big um, big roles for their children, certainly Prince George uh, and the other ch children, Charlotte and Louis, moving forward. But in this moment in their life, they want to hold on to that family aspect for as long as possible. I think, I think that's lovely. Fair enough, exactly. Absolutely. They're well entitled to do that. Thank you so much, as okay. always. Thank you very much, Russell. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.